I came out with a book about Gen Z and how we were expected to kind of shock the world when it came to this election in March called The End of the Alphabet. And everyone laughed at me way back when, when I said, you will be shocked at how overwhelmingly conservative, not just politically, but culturally, this generation is as we continue to grow up. Half of Gen Z can't even vote yet, and all of the data about them suggests the younger half of our generation is even more conservative than those of us who can vote. So I have a lot of hope for them. But zooming in on those of us from 18 to about 27 years old today, Kamala Harris only won the youth vote by less than 8 percent. And that was about a 30 percent win for Joe Biden in 2020. Wow. Importantly, the majority of young men, over 52 percent, voted for Donald Trump. And the rest of that tiny, tiny, tiny victory for Kamala Harris came from young women in Generation Z. So the, the reason for that is a million fold, but really, I think, comes down to the cultural shift we're seeing play out because of bold individuals operating on the cultural battlefield like yourself and Charlie mm -hmm. Kirk and Brett Cooper and Brandon mm -hmm. Tatum and people who are going out of their way to speak directly to Gen Z in a language that we understand. It's why we're not registering for $250,000 degree programs <laughs> to get a woke piece of paper because we know that's not going to be successful. 90% of Gen Z men and women still say that they want to get married someday, even in an overwhelmingly anti-marriage culture uh, mm -hmm. that also trends with wanting to have a family, which is overwhelmingly supportive uh, of what the next generation is going to look like, despite everyone saying, don't have kids, it's going to ruin your life. And maybe most importantly, and most towards conservatism culturally, Gen Z is experiencing a massive, massive resurgence of faith right now. The Catholic Church has just reported a huge mm. increase in people signing up for RCIA <laughs> in the last couple of years, joining the church. We see these mass baptism events on college campuses and Ohio State football players talking about why their faith is the most important thing to them on podcasts. So I think we're seeing that upstream mm. cultural shift happen, and that's only going to manifest as more conservative politically. Well, you look at the ideologies, like the contest of ideologies, right? The far left ideology and then conservative ideals and which one really ages well, right? I mean, there is this, there is this common sense that the more, you know, as you get older, as you mature, you often become more conservative. You know, once you have your, you get married for the first time, you get your first job. And certainly when you have your first kid, then all of a sudden, all of these, you know, what grandma believes about politics and culture starts to really drive home for you. You're like, oh, this makes sense. Like, yeah, I shouldn't go, uh, you know, having a, a more, more traditional lifestyle actually is nice. You know, it actually helps me raise my kids. It actually helps me have a healthier relationship with my husband or my wife. And I, I think the real world experience that people are having really helps. And that's where the conservative movement has always had that on their side, lived experience. Are there some trends that you're seeing in how people are faring mentally and economically that you think are also driving people to faith and conservatism? Because I know in the last decade, there have been real hard pills to swallow for younger people when it comes to mental health. And then also yeah. e economically, it's it's rough out there. I mean, today, affording a house as a young person feels like an almost impossibility. And even with that yeah. fancy college degree, many people can't afford to move out of their parents' basement and they're, you know, under piles of student loan debt. So what are your thoughts on that and how that's impacting the trends? You know, interestingly, I think Gen Z has a leg up on generations older than us because we don't need to wait to have those major life milestones like getting married or having to pay your first massive tax bill to the IRS after starting your first business or having a child. We're really seeing the impact of big government and corruption and authoritarianism at earlier and earlier ages, which is a curse because we've seen how much that's impacted culture for the worse, but also a huge blessing in the long run that I don't think we should take for granted mm -hmm. because kids are being taught in second or third grade that they're probably born in the wrong body and don't go home and tell your mom and dad that. Kids are coming home from school saying that I had to wear a mask all day and I wasn't allowed to ever take it off to hang out with my friends or laugh or have this experience of real in-person connection. And the younger voters in this election, first-time voters now at age 18, really started experiencing the mass 
problems in humanity in the age of COVID when they were in the beginning of high school. So these are people that have experienced the real world impacts of what happens when leftist authoritarianism takes over at age 14, 13, 14, 15 years old. And so they get it. The light bulb is going off much earlier in life. I don't like being told what to do. I don't like being locked in my room. I don't like being indoctrinated into thinking I'm actually a boy when really I want to celebrate the fact that I'm a girl. And I'm really grateful for that because when these horrible economic situations or mental health crises end up manifesting throughout our entire lifetime, I mean, Gen Z has been the mental mm -hmm. health crisis generation our entire existence, we can recognize where that's coming from. And when things hit a really, really, really low point, I would say probably in 2021, right in the, the era of COVID, for Gen Z, it was a rock bottom wake up light bulb realization for us that we have our destiny in our hands mm -hmm. if we have the courage to seize it. In 2021, one